on the next episode of Sip Suds and Smokes. Wine is sunlight held together by water. God, I miss that man. I could listen to I could listen to read the phone book. I mean, he's Hans Gruber. I mean, what more do you want? I mean, forget Voldemort and all that other stuff. I mean, he's Hans Gruber. And he did Bottle Shack. Come on. <laughs> well, here are the wines we're going to be tasting today. We've got from Skyside, we have the Skyside Red Blend 2018. We have the Skyside Cabernet Sauvignon 2018. From Dow, we have Pessimus 2019. The Dow Discovery Collection Cabernet Sauvignon 2019. The Dow Reserve Cabernet 2019 and Dow Bodyguard 2018. And last but not least, we have the Terrazas de los Andes Reserva High Altitude Vineyard Malbec 2018. We'll be right back after this break. live from the dude in the basement studios why because that's where the good stuff is it sips suds and smokes with your smoke and host the good old boys It's sippin' time. Hey, yes, it's sippin' time again. Hello and welcome to this Sips episode where everything good in life is worth discussing. As always, we are the best thing on at 2 a.m. Or 3 a.m., but definitely not 4 a.m. No, no, definitely not. No, no, it's much better. Like Creature Features on at 4 a.m. Exactly. So, Really, if you sure should stop Pornhub, Bob? It's Pornhub at four. In your house, definitely. Definitely, definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. You twisted little monkey, you. Well, this is a one-hour show that is somewhat mildly entertaining for about 27 minutes on a good We're day. We're going for 28 today. Yeah, it's not going to happen. You can try all you right. want. It's not going to happen. We don't have Brent. It could happen. I doubt it. I doubt it. No, it's more entertaining when we give Brent Isla Scotch. That's the most entertaining. Oh, yeah, it's fun to True. watch him free. But that's a 30-second <laughs> wash-my-mouth out entertainment. <laughs> well, this is Made Man Bob, and joining me today are our good old gal, Denise. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for inviting me to drink wine in the wee hours of the morning. And Made Man Maury. Good morning, Bob. I love the Bacchus theme in the basement today. And good old boy, Harmy. And pardon me, Bob, I'm still getting the grape skins from between my toes. Ugh. Fresh wine. Anything, I only want the fresh wine. Anything that where's comes. This, where's the, where's the yeah. sound effect? Bring us some fresh That's, wine. No more of this old stuff. That what you want? That's exactly wine yeah. and toe cheese. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I've yeah I've seen him with I've seen his feet before. It's it's a it's a nightmare, man. I mean, it's the kind of things that like you, you ever see saw. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's like. That Mary Poppins compared well, the boy to doesn't wear shoes. shoes what do you expect? That's my wife who doesn't wear shoes. Yeah, believe me, I can't get her. It's, I can't take her anywhere. Well, that's that whole Alabama thing. I know. I so you know, Woo! what do you want? She's teaching my daughter. I think this. I think since school ended, I don't think my daughter's had a pair of shoes on. It's horrible. Don't look at me. I can't help you with it. Well, we're going to be doing a Sips episode today, and our Sips episodes are all about wine, distilled spirits, tea, and coffee, and today's show is going to be a wine show. Wine is sunlight held together by water. God, I miss that man. I could listen to I could listen to read the phone book. I mean, he's Hans Gruber. I mean, what more do you want? I mean, forget Voldemort and all that other stuff. I mean, he's Hans Gruber, and he did Bottle Shack. Come on. <laughs> Well, here are the wines we're going to be tasting today. We've got from Skyside, we have the Skyside Red Blend 2018. We have the Skyside Cabernet Sauvignon 2018. And from Dow, we have Pessimus 2019, the Dow Discovery Collection Cabernet Sauvignon 2019, the Dow Reserve Cabernet 2019, and Dow Bodyguard 2018. And last but not least, we have the Terrazas de los Andes Reserva High Altitude Vineyard Malbec 2018. 
So we're going to ask Denise to uh, tell us all about our signature sounds that we use to rate these lovely wines. You got it. Number one, give me a glass of water to wash out my mouth. It's been forever since you've done these, Denise. It's, it's one sip. One sip. Yeah. What did I say? Number one? You said number, number one. All because number I'm number one. Because you are number one. That's true. But number one is really not number one. What is it? Well, it's, not, it's, it's definitely not set. number two. All right, so let's go. <laughs> I know the difference between uh, those. I'm not <laughs> sure where this is going. But <laughs> Me either. <laughs> Just because we got the doctor one, down there, he's going to tell us. But that implies it's the best. Our number one is one sip is actually the, the opposite. Worst. Yeah. Oh, the worst. Yeah. That's where I'm going. All right, well, moving on. Thank you for on. clearing that up. Well, I, I'm just, it maybe was the whole Pornhub discussion, but I'm going to divulge something. I'm going to divulge something <laughs> oh, your, your, no. your wife said. Hey, stop mentioning. The They're not paying for ads, okay? <laughs> <laughs> off the air, How Denise about- goes, it's only kinky the first time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving That's on. That's an old expression. <laughs> I, I've never heard that one. Really? I'm going to have oh, to use that on my God. wife. <laughs> yeah, that's a perfect one. It's perfect. Two sips. Nice. But what else do you have? Well, isn't that nice? Three sips. Hmm, interesting. What was that again? Interesting. Four sips. Let's keep this a secret to ourselves. Pour me another. Oh, that was sexy. That was good. She's getting sexy with the mic now. It's all, that, more wine it's, all that, yeah, it's all that Pornhub talk. <laughs> Five sips. Oh, my. I was unaware anything could be this good. Okay. Ready, Maury? Sound you've never heard? Oh I'm ready. Yes! 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 Don't feel bad. I've never heard it either. I'll have so. what she's having. <laughs> all right. So let's go to our first wine, and we're going to have Arm tell us all about that one. Well, thank you, Bob. Number one. You're welcome. Arm. We're doing number one. Yeah. yeah. Number, one, number one. <laughs> number nine. Number nine. Okay. Number nine. So, uh, Dow. Beatles fan. We, we, didn't have a, we didn't have a really big blurb about Dow, but. Uh, it's not Dow. Dow. What are you talking about? Uh, Skyside. Uh, Skyside is by Dow, isn't it? No. <laughs> are you sure? Maybe, maybe you want me to read this one for you? <laughs> <laughs> have I been drinking too much? Second page of or the not script. Enough. Skyside. Sonoma Coast. No, it's right. You're right. Oh, wow. I thought was, whatever, man. So our first wine is the Skyside uh, Red Blend. So Skyside sources its fruit from five counties that make up the North Coast Appalachian, including Mendocino. Mendocino? Mendocino. 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 Whatever, man. Rhymes with casino. This is a guy that owns a wine store, right? Okay, never mind. I don't buy wine from Mendocino. Oh. Sonoma Lake, Solana, and Napa Valley. The head winemaker, Ann Dempsey, can trace her roots in the business back to the Tusc- her Tuscan grandfather, who started the, his U.S. wine business in the 1920s. And our first wine is the Skyside Red Blend 2018, aged 10 months and 30% new French oak, 13.5 ABV. Uh, it's 43% Merlot, 39% Syrah, 14% Cabernet Sauvignon, 3% Malbec, 1%, 1% Petite Syrah. Winemaking begins in the vineyard, with each block carefully framed and harvest, farmed and harvested. Wow. Yeah. It's that television. You, you want these glasses about? here? My glasses are over there. <laughs> I took them off long ago. Put them on. No, can't do, can't do this. So this you, you, I've got my wine goggles on now. So anyway, each block is carefully farmed and harvested in the cool morning hours, and then fermented on skin for 14 to 18 days, separated by lot. And then there's pump over for one to two times daily. So I like the fact that they age each lot separately than do their blending, not just dump everything into a big blending vat, all the grapes. And you like the pump over, I'm assuming. (laughs) This is not that kind of show. You usually have to pay extra for that. I know, but it's we know how we're harm things. In Subic Bay, I can tell you, it it, never mind. Okay. Uh, The color of this wine, is it's a slightly translucent ruby. You can see my fingers through it. It is um, nice on the nose. I, I I let this one breathe. Did you guys uh, aerate this at all? I aerated this one, but uh, red currant and plum. Did the aeration help? The aeration didn't make this a lot better. There's there's a little bit of plum here. There's some spiciness to it. I'm I'm, I'm reapproaching it now. Um, it's kind of warm. 
And on the palate, mm, some high acidity up front, but it's backed up with some nice uh, oak, subtle oak. It's not more than, it's, it's got high acidity with a little bit of fruit, nice oak, and a, like a little bit of chocolate and tiny, a tiny amount of grip. And the finish is medium to, you know, sh short to medium. It's a great introductory red for, uh, you know, everyday drinking. What do you think, Denise? I like it. It's pleasant. Um, hmm. I think that it could appeal to a lot of different palates. I get a lot of fruit on the nose. Um, I really didn't get any of the chocolate, um, but I definitely got the, the oak. And it's you're right. It's a subtle oak. I, I don't think that I got a lot of the fruit. It's just to me, it's like kind of muddled. It's not, I couldn't pick out what fruit. I, I can't identify the fruit, but it's fruity. So I, I can't tell you that it's dark cherry or blackberry or, or, you know, boysenberry for that matter. But I do get the fruit. I get the subtle oak. Um, I, it's really light and pleasant on the palate. And on the finish for me, I thought it was really short, but it's really interesting because it lingers in the back of my throat. So I don't get a lot of finish you know, on the tongue or, or the whole mouthfeel, but right in the back of the throat, it just sort of sits there. Kind of interesting That's and nice. The, I think that I feel, I, I, I associate that with, that with the oak. Tonsillitis or oh, okay. the oak. Yeah. The well, oak. tonsillitis could be another one. No, but it's nice. I like it. It's pleasant enough. Maury, you're just sort of staring off into space. How's it going No, I'm waiting there? for you to finish. I'm done. Your words of wisdom. <laughs> Uh, I would have to agree with you, Denise. Oh. I think that... Oh, um, hold on. That'll never happen again. You're recording this, right, yeah. Bob? Okay, great. It was somewhat one note for me. It was pleasant. There was nothing off-putting. And usually was, she's waiting for him to finish. There were no flaws. Um, I, I thought, you know, it could be a nice poolside all-day quaffing wine. It's got a little bit of acid. It's got a little bit of backbone. It's got a little bit of soft tannin. It's got a little bit of fruit. It's got something for everyone. Um, exactly. Finish, I agree with you, is short. And yeah, I think it's that oak that kind of lingers in the throat, gives you a little <clears throat> right in the back of your throat. And uh, uh, very pleasant wine. I'm a nurse. That's called post-nasal drip, but that's okay, too. <laughs> Never heard that it could be oak. term I'll, used. I've I'll heard some fancy words used. about in, his drip. That's not what I'll, he's talking about. I'll tell about. my patients. Oh my it's just the oak. Yeah. I've heard some <laughs> fancy words used rating wine. That's a term I've never heard used before. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's got a very pleasant nose, very fruity. Like you said, Denise, I can't, it's not, I can't point and go, okay, there's cherry or there's this. It's mm -hmm. just sort of a generic fruity nose. Um, harms on it, right? When he's, you know, he said it was, you know, sort of a warm flavor to it. Um, I don't pick up any of the cocoa that they have in their tasting notes. Neither did I. Um, you know, maybe I'm just missing it, but. You know, on the palate, it's it's got a nice feel. No, I don't I don't smell it at all, but I, I taste mm. it at the very end, right before the finish goes up. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I've already moved on to the next yeah, wine. It's got, a, it's, you, it's got a nice already? acidity to it. It's a little bit high in acid, but very nice. And we're going to rate the Skyside Red Blend two sips. Well, isn't that nice? Hey, and we're back. We just finished tasting the Skyside Red Blend 2018. Uh, we gave that two sips, and we're going to be moving on to our next wine. We're going to have Denise tell us all about that one. Okay, perfect. So this is the Skyside Cabernet Sauvignon 2018. It's aged for 10 months in 35% new French oak, 94% Cabernet Sauvignon, 5.5% Merlot, and 0.5% Cabernet Franc. The grapes are fermented on skins for 18 to 21 days, separated by lot, and her meat is a pump over pump one over. to two times daily, coming mm. in at 13.8% ABV. So oh, yeah. I would have to say that the color of this is, I can't remember how you described the last one. Like a, I said slightly translucent ruby. Slightly translucent ruby. This is not that. No, this is a little deeper. This is intensely opaque. Yeah, it's a lot deeper. Right? Yeah. I don't know. I'm comparing them. I mean, I guess if I look at the other glasses. This is, op this is definitely opaque uh, garnet. It's beautiful, though. Lovely to look at. On the palate, or rather on the nose. Let me do on the nose first. It's got the deep plum. So they describe it as plum, but I, I would really like to add that for me, it's a deep plum, some blueberry, and I thought it was the nose itself was really pleasant and inviting. Um, and I always like that. I do get some of the floral uh, notes on the nose. And... Um, 
some spices and a tiny bit of chocolate, maybe mocha, um, but not a whole lot. It's not not one thing that is overpowering or overbearing on the nose. And on the palate, I really thought it was really simple. Um, the fruits, they're dark, they're deep. And I get a lot more chocolate, though, on the palate with this one. Uh, the tannins are nice. So, oh, you want to jump in, Maury? I see you can't. You can't hold back. Do it. No, no, finish Interject. your thought. No, no, don't let her finish, Maury. Why would this Do be it. any different from any other day? That's true. <laughs> well, you're you're right. It has oh. more complexity. <laughs> it, it has you're more. Right. It has more chocolate and dark fruits. It's definitely got more tannin. It's got a little more structure. It's got uh, more tannin, less acidity. I think than the previous wine. Yes, it, it is. A little one note for me on the palate. It's definitely a very quick, short finish. I don't get Absolutely. that linger even in the throat either. Um, again, pleasant, nice, no flaws, Mm-mm. well made, uh, just a little on the simple side. Right, right. But very nice to have because, you know, if you have a deep cellar and you have some really big, bold wines, especially Cabernets, you know, not all of your guests are are really ready for that. So something mm. like this, you, you really need to have on hand so that, you know, you can appeal to everybody. And this is one of those uh, really simple, easy drinking, very pleasant, not off putting uh, finish was a little short, but that's okay. But I do think it benefited from some air. It was definitely much more closed when we first opened the bottle. Yeah. And an hour on the glass has really helped it. Right. I, I aerated mine. And I think this one stood up to the aeration using a Venturi. Um, we we're, we we're talking about the, the, look i agree with what you guys were saying but to me it's not quite varietally correct for cabernet okay it's a little bit off for like regular i mean i know it's it's 94% cab it should smell more like a cab to me mm. uh there's a i mean what is correct though i do get that violet note i do get some pencil lead i do get some menthol uh as it's breathing and the plum is there but then there's that blueberry to me, blueberry and cab don't really go together. That's, mm. but the blueberry's there. Yeah, the blueberry's there. But I get a little bit of graphite. I think the graphite does does kind of imply that, that, that's that's definitely cab. a cab thing. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. I'm not. It's just just a little bit off for what I was expecting for the nose. But on the palate, Damn, Cabernet this is pleasant. Group, it's pleasant. Uh, grapes. They didn't follow the hmm? varietal correctness code. Hmm. Not nah, everything is is textbook perfect but and frankly if everything were textbook perfect that would be boring true that's true Mm. that's what she said (laughs) wow but it's nice right yeah and as and as is sat in the glass it's gotten better yeah this has got enough backbone and at this price range where i think we're sub 20 i think uh i wouldn't expect this much backbone on a wine like this is actually quite nice yeah it's a, it's a just like the last one, a very good everyday drinker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it improved though in, in the glass. Oh, it definitely improved. And anybody else get menthol? More structure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, a little hint. Not of too much. Eucalyptus menthol, yeah. kind yeah. of on the way. Maybe back. it's more eucalyptus than yeah. menthol. Yeah, nice though. No, got it's got some nice structure to it, especially for a wine in its price range. You know, it's uh, you know, I think I think it's you know well put together. I think they've done a very good job with it. Um, and again, for the price point, you can't beat it. It's definitely a step up from the uh, regular red blend. So we're going to be rating the Skyside uh, Cabernet Sauvignon 2018, three sips. Interesting. So we're going to move on to our next winery, and we're going to have Maury tell us about that. Thank you, Bob. Uh, the Dow Family Estates is a family-owned and operated winery situated on a 212-acre hilltop estate in the... Adelaida district of Paso Robles. Their geology, favorable microclimate, and high elevation were once described by renowned California winemaker Andre Telechef as a jewel of ecological elements, quote unquote. Dow's goal is to make unique fine wines that honestly and accurately reflect the potential of the estate and to craft Bordeaux style wines that combined old world tradition with new world techniques. Okay. How do you say that name? <laughs> Which <laughs> Which one? Chilestra Andre. Chef. I say it Andre. I don't even try yeah. the last yeah. one. Yeah. Chilestra Chef. Yeah. Uh, the first wine will be the Pessimist by Dow, 2019. It's 73% Petite Syrah, 14% Zinfandel, 12% Syrah, 1% Grenache, and it comes in at 15.2%. ABV. 
Now, as for the uh, the color, um, it's not quite as opaque as the previous wine, and yet not quite as translucent as the very first Skyside wine. So, again, a medium, garnety, slightly translucent garnet color. On the nose, you're definitely getting uh, more fruit, uh, black fruits, uh, black raspberry, currant, cherry, a little bit of plum. As this sat, this got better, too. Yes, it did get better. Um, and there's uh, at the end, there's some trailing sense of, uh, of some earthiness, um, maybe a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of uh, dark chocolate at the very, very end, maybe even a little hint of leather or tobacco. Uh, on the palate, it's bright. It's got vibrant flavors. Definitely I don't getting... find it that bright. No, I've had brighter. I mean, when, but when, when, when people describe wine and bright, I expect more acidity. Yep. Yeah. But it's definitely got some cherry, some cranberry, some plum and raspberry. Uh, it's got a nice texture. It's got moderate tannins. Um, it's got a reasonable finish, I would say, moderate or medium uh, with a hint of uh, of dark fruit. Uh, I think it's a nice wine. It's uh, it's well done. Uh, I, I think some of the other stuff from Dow we've had is as good or better, but I think this is a nice effort and a uh, nice price point. Denise? I would agree with, well, first and foremost, I agree with Harmeet. When I see bright and vibrant, that it's not this wine. Um, and that's okay, because I actually would describe this as soft and sweet. And uh, Soft on the and sweet, yeah, on the well, palate. I understand for me. why he said bright because what he's describing is those red fruits, mm-hmm. but the acidity is not there, right? Which is, and which is fine. This this wine is exactly. not built like that, right? I mean, for me on the nose, sweet. I I thought it was very it earthy. Smells sweeter now as it's sad. Yeah, but on the nose for me it was very earthy, and at the very end. Um, on the nose, I thought it was really soft and powdery. And I kept going back to like, why is that soft and powdery? First, I'm getting this real big earthy mushroom sort of on the nose, but then it finishes with this sort of soft powdery finish on the nose. And on the palate for me, sweet again and soft. Um, I do get a, a hint of like this tart cranberry. It is silky in texture. Uh, the finish was nice. It wasn't this powerful, long finish, uh, but the finish is pleasant enough, and I, I thought this was a really pleasant wine. And yeah, Bob is still sipping on Bob his. Is sipping. We're waiting for He's Bob thinking, to say, oh, boy. I'll just jump in. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so I've had Pessimist before, I and, you know, you know, a disclaimer, I sell the hell out of this wine. It moves. I've had the 17 and 18 most recently. This is the first time I'm tasting the 19, and it didn't seem to stand up to the older vintages, but as it sits in the glass, I think maybe it just needs more bottle time. As it sits in the glass, it's getting better and better. And I aerated this one as well. I did do Venturi on it. And it just needs some time. It's, it's just still young. The 18 is drinking much better than this right now. But as this one goes, it's, it's building. Uh, Denise was talking about the mushroomy, earthy flavors. Uh, I get that a lot. I got but it more the on very, the nose. The very first thing I got was like an explosion of blueberries when I first poured it. That's gone away. And now we're getting um, more black fruit. And uh, it's it's got a, a hint of like sweet. I mean, we, we keep saying the word sweet, mm-hmm. but let me be clear. This is a dry red wine. Yeah. Thank There's you, no because sugar. Because it's not yes. sweet. No, no. People. No, it's on the nose. It fools you. Yes. It's like uh, if somebody ever made you like a really sweet Cuban cafe, uh, just I'll give you sugar. that. Mm-hmm. It, uh, if you let it sit and come back to it, the nose it's definitely coffee. has a It's sweet, a sweet. coffee. Yeah. It's like somebody put way too much sugar in your coffee, and it's got that mocha coffee thing going on, a little chocolate, a little uh, caramel almost, or toffee, but that goes away. It's, 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 it's just this wine needs time to integrate, and based on previous vintages, I'm very hopeful for this wine, but right now it's still a bit young as a 2019. Um, I think I liked it more than you did, actually. Denise and Maury, but right. um, uh, when we talked about it earlier, but, but it has changed so you're, dramatically. You're pretty down on it at first compared to the uh, older vintages of the yeah. Pessimist. But the thing is, I I was expecting more from it because I was colored by my previous. Uh, my, you know, my impressions were colored. By I know my you're colored, experience. but unlike you, we, I don't see color. Let's leave sir. skin color out of it. <laughs> yeah, all right. No, you're you should see color and acknowledge the struggle. But whatever, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> Well, I don't know. This, run's, this wine's not really struggling, so I don't know what. No, I'm the wine's not struggling. No, the, the wine just needs time. 
And I, I think it benefits. I think the Venturi was not enough. It needed mm-hmm. Venturi plus time. And that tells me this bottle's got several more years to, yeah. to develop. It needs some time to sit. It yeah. definitely needs some time to sit. It's still very close. But at but. that price point, people want to walk in, open it, pop the cork, and drink Look, it. $20 retail, I've been selling this all, every day, all day. If And like once a year, I think we get it below that in the store. But for that, it's, it's a powerhouse for that point price point. But again, it took a lot longer to open up than I thought it would. So this, let's, I'm very hopeful for this wine in the future. But right now, so young. Yeah, I mean it, it's well. Put I'm more together. pessimistic about the pessimist. <laughs> I know. I like it. I like it a lot more than both of you. No, it, it's it. The nose is completely changed with time, mm-hmm. and the palate is still there. So, mm. and it's got, and you, uh, Denise, you said medium finish. I'm I'm gonna. Mm. I'm, it's on the verge of long. Really? Yeah. No, I found well, it short. That's to medium. the difference between men and women. Mm-hmm. So right there, <laughs> long and short. But that's fine on the finish. All right, right in yeah. the toilet we go. So we're going to be rating. Is that kind of like this much? As we're going to be rating the. Yeah. Uh, I had I had wine in my mouth when she said that. I almost sprayed the microphone. <laughs> yeah, the Dow Discovery Collection Cabernet Sauvignon 2019. Uh, well deserved three sips. Interesting. I think it deserves more. Weren't under we protest. talking about the pessimist? Yes. Was it pessimist? pessimist? Yes. 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 Bob read the uh, Discovery Collection. Yeah, Bob, Bob doesn't know where he is. He's been drinking too much. We we we're talking what? about pessimists. Oh. That was sorry. the pessimist we gave three sips. That was the pessimist. I think okay. it deserves four, but whatever. Yeah, sorry. I don't care. Pessimist is three sips. Yeah. You I guys are the pessimists. You are the pessimist. Now on to Bob. <laughs> yeah. Well, please tell us about the Discovery Collection Cabernet Sauvignon. Yep. Trying to trying to keep up here. I think he wants <sighs> us to move faster. So let's see here. The uh, Discovery Collection Cabernet Sauvignon 2019's aged in barrel for 10 months. 60% new French oak, 14.5% ABV. The 2019 growing season produced uh, possibly the greatest vintage in Paso Robles uh, that they've ever had. Uh, winter rains were followed by moderate temperatures through the summer, allowing for extended hang time and ultimately yielding to the late harvest to date. Um, on the color... It's got a really nice, a real nice garnet to it. I think the pessimist was a little bit darker, but it's got a real I nice. I can't tell my glass is empty. It's got a real nice rim. It's got a nice glow to it. Let's see. On the palate. Mm. It's got a lovely palate. A little bit, again, a dry wine, but a little bit fooling you on the sweet side. Um, cherries, it's got some really nice tannin to it. Got a great mouth feel. Get it on the tongue, get it on the teeth. Um, on the nose, definitely a lot of blackberry. I'm picking up cherry. They have, uh, boysenberry. They have pencil lead in their notes, and I think they're dead on with that. I definitely picked that out. It's definitely boysenberry and pencil lead there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that minerality to it, that almost that graphite minerality to it. I, I don't get the menthol. Do you get any menthol in it? I, I really don't. Got it. You did. Oh, that's awesome. You don't? No, I just get um a, a lot of herbal notes. No, there was more menthol in the in the sky side, but it's there. It's right at the end. Hmm. Let's, I'm gonna have to keep going back to that. No, it comes out. No, it's very nice though. What do you think, Maury? Well. I would agree with a lot of what you said, Bob. Uh, I think it's got a nice fruity nose. I'm definitely getting the uh, boysenberry and the cherry and black cherry, and as well as some of those dried uh, herbal flavors and things. Um, it's a nice wine. It's a completely different style than the previous one. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. We're talking about varietal correctness. This is varietally correct. Yeah. That well, huge hit of cassis. And you know, I was thinking it. it tastes a little bit more like a Merlot varietal. I was thinking it's not really? so varietally correct for Cabernet. I you was going to bring that up. You think like Merlot? I, I think there's something wrong with your... And if they want to drink Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. No, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. <laughs> uh, pleasant, <laughs> medium finish. Um, again, tannins are nice. Um, this nice. is Paso Robles Cabernet, not Napa Valley. Right. Well, like I said, right. for me, it, it, it was reminiscent of Merlot. Really? What do you think? Uh, no, not reminiscent of Merlot. Not for me. But that's okay. Um, it, it's it's pretty simple across the board. You get the dark cherry. You get the nice tannins. 
Um, I get a lot of herbal notes on the nose. And uh, I also get, you know, herbal notes on the palate. And I love that. So, you know, when I can pick up some herbs or some floral notes, either on the nose or palate, that's exciting for me. And uh, I love the finish. It's nice. It's uh, medium to long, actually. The longer it sits in the glass and the, it gets the more air it gets, yeah. it just gets this, better and the finish gets nicer as yeah, well. Yeah, the finish definitely This is spread, another sub $30 out. cab that tastes like much more expensive wine to yeah. me. Yeah. It's, I, I really enjoy this one. I know we're not supposed to talk about wine prices on the show, but whatever. I'm a retailer, man. I'm retailing. That's what you do. <laughs> but no, for the, I think it's a value. This wine, look at it. Uh, more variety correct. Uh, that blackberry, the cassis, a little leather on the finish, with not all that oak. I uh, think it's the uh, tannins that would move me away from uh, the Merlot, Maury. But maybe yeah, that's just to way, me. To me, Merlot way too has tannin. more plum and vanilla, mm -hmm. and this yeah. doesn't have that. And uh, Merlot tends to be more floral, I think. This is less floral. I got some floral out there, of this. No, and I I'm not the saying there's no light. floral notes, but this is more herbal. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And the menthol on the finish just pegs at his cab. I, I really enjoy this wine. I mean, for the price, let's do this every day. Good, good everyday Cabernet. These Dow brothers, uh, George, I can't remember the other name. Oh, there's, there's these two Lebanese brothers. Curly. They, 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 yeah. Herb. <laughs> Curly. Go with the, yeah. Let's go with Herb. Yeah. Shem. <laughs> Yeah. They they put they put uh, they they really elevated Paso's wine game. I think they did a great job with this. Well, there's some really great stuff coming out of Paso. Yeah, there is now. Yeah. There is now. Oh, these were the 80s. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, back in the day, it was not it was not thought of you know in some of the higher circles yeah. that it is today. So no. well, all, climate change has a little bit to do with that too. The weather's changing uh, and the climate's changing, and they've yeah, got I don't know. Everybody complains about climate change. I don't know. The wine seems to be getting thing better. I'm not really worried about it. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, right. we're going to have some really horrible climate in France. They're destroying Bordeaux soon. So really, yeah, you think it's happening? Okay. Well, we're going to be rating the Dow Cab three sips. Interesting. Hey, and we're back, and we just finished discussing the Dow Discovery Collection Cabernet Sauvignon 2019. Gave it a well-deserved three sips. Great wine. So we're going to move on to our next wine from the folks at Dow. We're going to have Harm tell us about that one. Well, thank you, Bob. Um, our next wine is the Dow Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon 2019, aged 15 months and 50% French uh, new French oak, 14.7% ABV. The 2018 was an extremely long season with a good amount of rain, which gave way to a late, later bud break in April. The weather remained steady from spring through June, followed by a long heat wave that fortunately did not affect the quality of the grapes due to the fact that it was before the start of the, uh, the Verizon. The cooling trend ensued for the rest of the season right after the heat wave, prolonging the hang time and leading into harvest, resulting in deep color and concentration. And speaking of color and concentration, this is an intense opaque garnet, verging on purple. Uh, the nose, after sitting uh, during the show, it's gotten more floral. At first, it was more dark chocolate and blackberry. Now I'm getting all these floral notes, violets coming out of this glass. Yes, sir. There they are. Yeah. Front uh, and center. Violets. Beautiful. And, oh, yeah, I got I to gotta just keep smelling this. Man, you know, I was about to get up and go get some blue cheese, but then someone didn't give us enough time in the, in the, in the break. So, well, maybe that someone could deliver some blue cheese to you. <laughs> I see that someone over there. <laughs> I need to pair oh. this. <laughs> and he offered up oh, a little wow. sign language for you. Yeah, I saw, mm -hmm. I saw that. <laughs> Are you saying I'm number one? There was only one finger up. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The cheese platter arrives. Um, I agree, Harmeet. You could smell this all day long. The cheese got here. As, as soon as Harm walked it. in the door, the cheese was here. Yeah. I mean, there were some tasting notes that talk about the blackberries, but I don't know if it's because I recently went blueberry picking, but I get a lot of blueberries and a lot of violets. I, and I disagree nose. with you completely on the blueberries, Denise, but the violets were there. I agree with you. It's all blackberry and then a little black cherry. No, the violets the are there. Mm. 
but I get more blue over black. Black cherry, in the berry. cassis. I mean, they have blueberry on their pa- on their notes on their notes for palate, but I don't get the blueberry. I just don't get it, and I don't get raspberry either. It's mm. it's darker fruit. Well, blueberry is a darker fruit, but um, but to me, it's more black. And there's lots of toasty note from the barrel aging. A little graphite. I thought the other one. I frankly, the the, the uh, there was more graphite in their discovery series than the reserve. And uh, it's just it's. There's like a hint of black pepper on the end of the, mm-hmm. pe- of the finish, like freshly cracked black pepper. I, it's got a long finish. I really enjoy this wine, I really do, and I really want to try it with some uh, cheese and crackers because I've already taken my tasting notes, so I can now you know defile my palate with palate coating cheese. I don't say defile, but really, it's that's the wrong verb. Yeah, uh, I mean the, the finish. It's not short. I wished it were a little bit longer. Um, because I just think that the the nose and the palate are are really interesting um, and and beautiful. But uh, I'll take the shorter finish any day to have that nice mouth feel. Look at Maury smiling. I wonder why. <laughs> oh, there we go with the finish again. <laughs> or, or the or mouth, the mouth feel. feel. You know, <laughs> I'm going to be contradictory to you guys. That's where we got kicked off NPR. Okay. <laughs> Right I really like this wine. I think this wine is delicious. I do think it take, took a little longer to open up. It is a reserve. They tend to need a little more air, a little more bottle time, a little more decanning time. Well, well, look, both of these vintages are 2019, and I think they're still young. Yes, it's young. They're way young. It's young, but I think it's a great wine. I think it's a fantastic wine. It's a better wine. What kind of blue cheese had is Bob? For Not that the people listening care. What is this? I blue cheese. It's a good it's one. Blue. Yeah. It's blue. It's blue. So as I was saying, um, I think this wine will evolve and will continue to evolve and improve with age. It definitely improved during the time we had it in the glass with a little aeration. Definitely helped it. Uh, you know, it's structured. It's uh, reserved. It's got plenty of tannins. It's going to go for the long haul. It's got definitely the violet floral nose. I think the nose is really interesting. It's one of the more interesting uh, Cabernet noses I've uh, had the pleasure of uh, smelling in quite some time. Um and uh, I think it's a beautiful wine. I, I really liked it. So far, it's the best thing that I've seen all day uh, with regard to uh, Cab. I think it's varietally correct. Uh, I, I think it's a beautiful wine. I just want to describe the interplay going on here. It was like, as Mari's was fading out because he was looking at his notes and talking to the paper floor. instead of his... Talking to the floor side of his microphone. Yeah. The expressions on Bob's faces. We need to be on YouTube because the rage and apoplexy that's on the microphone can, can be in front so of well. you. Yeah. Talk into he turned it. two shades redder than he is now. I'm going to buy Bob a Nerf gun yeah. and he can load that go. baby up with darts and then yeah, that'll take care go. of that. That'll get your yeah. attention. Oh, that's Paint great. It's not because I've well. been drinking. This is just entertaining even oh, yeah. when you're sober. Pass the cheese, would you? Well, it's big him. It's because Either pass it or cut it. Oh, like... I'll, I'll put some cheese on a cracker for What'd you. What did you think of the reserve cab, Mr. Bob? I thought it was excellent. I, I thought it was really, really Closer well to the mic, together. Bob. Um, <laughs> I can't hear you. Can you speak up? Clear your throat? It's definitely got some berries to it. Anything um, but blue. I've, it's got a great mouthfeel. It's got some, you know, really nice tannin to it. It's I, I don't think it's the tannin is as big as on the last one we did, um, but... Very well put together. Got a nice fruity note to it. No, the the tannins there. Yeah. It just hasn't hasn't had time to to totally integrate. Yeah, it, it just it's it hasn't bloomed yet. But overall, you know, an excellent wine. I think very very well done. So it's hard to take a young reserve cab. Yeah, that's been in a lot of new French oak. Yeah, and, and it's and yeah, it's drink hard. it after a year yeah, after it's, it's been bottled. It really needs. Minimum two more years yeah. in the bottle before you approach this wine. So we're, you know, we're theorizing where it's going to go. And, and an hour and of decanting. Yeah, it's and almost aeration. unfair to drink certain wines when they're Thank that you. young. So, um, but I think this has got potential to go for quite a while. I think I it's agree. Got, I think it's got great potential to, you know, exceed where it is right now. Um, but we're going to be rating the uh, Dow Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon 2019. Well deserved three sips. Interesting. Again, under protest, you guys are underrating these wines. Hey, I was with you. Better. It was the other two. All right, so we're going to move on to our next wine. We're going to have Maury tell us about that one. 
Thank you, Bob. I'll try to talk into the mic this time. It would be nice for once. <laughs> uh, so the next wine in the lineup would be the Dow Bodyguard 2018. It is a blend of 59% Petit Verdot. Wasn't that a really bad movie with Whitney Houston? Yeah, And 41% Petit Syrah. Bad movie? Interesting yeah. combination. Yeah. You are a Philistine, my friend. It's been aged for 15 months in new, 50% new French oak, and it clocks in at 14.7% ABV. This is the deepest, darkest, most purple, opaque wine we've had the pleasure of drinking today. It's just got a beautiful... Deep, dark purple color. Oh, and there's more. Please don't, if you don't mind. Where's the aerator? The nose is definitely fragrant and fruity. There's definitely blackberry and raspberry and currant and cassis. In the back end, you definitely get some of the licorice and maybe even a little sweet pipe tobacco. Mocha. I don't really get the menthol that they talk about. Denise, did you get menthol? No. I really didn't get that either. No, I really didn't. On the palate, I agree. It's it's juicy. It's fleshy. It's got cherry and cranberry and strawberry and blueberry and blackberry. A um, little bit of dusty leather. A little bit of crushed herbs and cigar box. Um, I, I really love this wine. Uh, I thought it was delicious. I thought it was really well made. I thought it had a nice medium finish. It had a beautiful mouth coating palette. It's got beautiful... Um, nose to it and complexity and layers and the more it sits in the glass the more it improves uh definitely improve with some aeration uh and it just it's just something you can drink uh definitely you can kill the bottle there was some debate as to whether or not it had a little sweetness and whether or not we could drink a case of it today but I, we could definitely blow through the bottle with oh, no I problem. Can drink oh a case. that's not a problem see it stays fresh it it, it it's not cloying you don't you don't feel like you have to, after a couple or one glass of this, you want to stop. You want No, more. no. Right. That's delicious. It definitely that's kept what, me coming that's back. That's what elevates it from the other ones. I agree. Any other thoughts, Harm? Pipe tobacco. Yes. You I get tons that. of pipe tobacco on this. I don't, I don't get tons, but I certainly get tobacco and, and leather uh, and herbs. Yeah. And that's a really great combination. Mm. I mean, I know that I'm a little salty, but interestingly enough, and it's probably the first time I can ever say that on the nose of a wine, I get salt, ocean air salt. And I've had I, that several really? times, but I don't get it here. I, I really yeah, have not. Ha- I can't really recall ever having that. Um, well, saline it, note on the nose. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's there. probably softening um, or moving away from that. But when we first poured this wine, I thought, wow. No, no. See, like, I just re- I poured fresh just now, and the yeah. saline note's definitely there. Right. As it was sitting in my glass, and then it, they it fade. went away. It faded. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then you move on to the pal, and it's wonderful. I and, really uh, didn't get that, but... I really get a long finish on this, Maury. I don't get, you know, a medium finish for me. It, it, it oh, lasts. it's definitely it's long. There. She's right, Maury. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I just like When a woman finish. says it's long, let, let her... Yeah, take let, let me have he, my dream. He's confused when you say long, so we have to like you know. <laughs> we have to really simple. take the compliment. <laughs> we have to break it yeah. down for you. Yeah, shut up and take it. <laughs> yes, I'm happy to take the compliment. It's long. And maybe it just goes so well with this lovely cheese board that Bob has offered up today. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I found it outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sitting on the side of the Why road. Why is the knife so it, large, it, though? It's on the porch. Well, that's to you know keep harm and he doesn't you know, have a cheese knife. Oh, it's I, very large. You know, I I want to make sure that harm stays on Reminds his best me behavior. That, was, You're a complete bastard. And we all hate it. Wasn't it the that's movie Arthur? Hmm. Yeah, I he's love taking Arthur. the knife out of the cheese. Do you think he wants some cheese? <laughs> but he was really going to kill him. Bathing is a lonely <laughs> business. Yes. <laughs> Good stuff here. I like this wine. No, it's excellent wine. Um, there's not really much else I can say this about it. It's my first time tasting this one. I'm surprised no one has brought this said. to me. I'm shocked okay. you sell this, but you don't. I sell almost every wine on this table. It's just I don't. I've never had the bodyguard before. I'm surprised. It's a beautiful bottle. They did a beautiful job oh, the on label the label. Is, is reminiscent of Gustav Klimt. It actually may be a work of art by Klimt. I'm not sure. Who, who does this? I don't know, but it's it's beautiful packaging. It the beautiful. bottle's got some weight to it. It's got I'm pretty a beautiful sure it's not Jethro artwork Bodie. on the label. True happiness is safety in the arms of love is on the back. It's the Dow family crest. But this piece of work of art on the uh, front with the... Like almost like a gold leaf. You remember Gustav Klimt, the kiss? Yeah. It's like everybody's high school dorm poster. 
Um, okay. Yeah, this is now it's we're, kind of reminiscent of that. Now we're going down a rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no! Right. So we're going to be faucet. we're going to be rating the Dow bodyguard. Oh, I'm, I'm you said high school. I'm in college. college. Oh, college. okay. <laughs> we're going to rate the Dow bodyguard 2018 a well deserved four sips. Finally, I agree with you. It's about time. All right, so we're going to have Denise tell us about our last wine. Okay, last but certainly not least, the Terrazas de los Andes was founded in 1996 in the province of Mendoza, Argentina, built on the site of a winery originally built in 1898. With eight terraced vineyards located on the eastern foothills of the Andes at elevations ranging from 980 meters to 1,250 meters above sea level, each grape variety is planted at a specific altitude to take advantage of the specific climactic climactic conditions. That was anticlimactic to me. <laughs> So the Terrazas de los Andes Reserva High Altitude Vineyards Malbec 2018. 100% Malbec from... He meant climatic. You know that, right? <laughs> I do. But it, it, it was anticlimactic. Uh, Let's go ahead. So it's 100% Malbec from vines ranging from 20 to 80 years old and altitudes between 1,070 meters and 1,200 meters above sea level. The grapes are macerated and fermented for 20 to 25 days. The wine is aged for 12 to 14 months and one to two, no, I'm sorry, one to four French oak and a minimum of six months in bottle, coming in at 14% ABV. So this wine, Maury, you were talking about the last wine being really dark and deep in color this one is a really deep garnet color it's really beautiful in the glass but is it as deep as the last one no it's women not. prefer it deeper right i know but this one's not so deep it just that's she how life goes you yet, so obviously that's a lie <laughs> so on the nose you definitely get these beautiful dark fruits um i think they sort of wrote in the original tasting notes that it had notes of violets but I'm really sensitive I don't get to lilies, and I get lily, lily yeah. floral notes, not necessarily violets. I, and I, I agree with you. That's, I that's a good call. Violet, I, 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 I prefer put my finger on the lily. violets over lilies. You're not so supposed to put your finger on the... Oh, sorry. I'm, I think I was able to differentiate the two. So I get the deep, dark fruit. I get the uh, lilies, not violets. Um, and, and that's you know, okay, because I, totally I love I the floral I crossed out violets, but I couldn't tell what because the Because it's not violets, right? Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Um, on the palate, it's beautiful. Great tannins, slightly tart. It's got a medium finish, um, a pleasant finish at that. And I think this is a great wine. I'm excited to be drinking it. What do you think, Maury? Well, as much as I hate to admit That's it. That's a deep subject. Um, I agree with Denise. Nice wine. Improved with time in the glass. It improved with air. Uh, definitely pleasant to drink. Uh, no flaws. I agree with you on the lilies, and uh, I liked it. Harm? It was just a little bit out of place in the tasting order today, so I had to cleanse my palate. But other than that, yeah, dead on, dude. Dead yeah. on. This is this is the way. It, this this is a really nice high end Malbec. It's, it's yeah, definitely. you definitely needed a palate cleanse before it because coming off these high tannic, high fruit wines. <laughs> yeah, the cat, the Napa cat. I mean, the sorry, the uh, Paso cabs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Bob, yeah. you have any thoughts? Delicious. What can I say? They'd already been said, so we're going to rate the Terrazas de los Andes Reserva High Altitude Malbec 2018. Three sips. Mm. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're listening to us online, do us a favor and tap the follow or subscribe button. The easiest way to listen to our show is to ask Siri, Alexa, or Google to play podcast Sip Sud Smokes. We love your feedback. You can reach us online at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our daily tasting notes flow out on Twitter every day at Smoke, and our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. You'll also be able to interact with the thousands of other fans on those social media platforms. You can also check us out on Instagram at sipsudsandsmokes or at madebanbob. Do us a favor and take the time to rate this episode if you're listening online. It's a big help to us, and we get to see your feedback as well. You can check us out, uh, Maury and myself, on Facebook at the Bourbon Mafia. Bourbon Mafia is a nonprofit organization composed of bourbon enthusiasts and industry professionals with representation in eight states and two countries. Our members combine a love of bourbon with a passion for charitable work. I want to thank our co hosts for joining us today. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. This was a lovely lineup. I enjoyed it. Thank you, Maury. 
Thank you, Bob. I'll be uh, cleaning the purple off my toes and the skin's out from between them, but it was a lovely day in the basement. Ew, that just gives me a bad image in my head. You know, the, the thing is, Mari wasn't stomping on grapes. That's yeah. just, we yeah. don't want to know why it's like that. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> <laughs> you, you consult a podiatrist, dude, really, honestly. Very scary. So, good day. I was waiting for the thank you harm, Bob. Thank thank you, you, harm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you were eating the blue cheese. Yeah, I was eating the blue cheese. We have to thank you for that. You had a mouthful of blue cheese. Oh, God. Oh, you were finished. (laughs) Well, allow me to retort. Hey, hey, hey. Well, for Sip, Suds, and Smokes, this is Made Man Bob. Thanks for joining us. Remember, life is too short to drink bad wine. One Tan Hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the Dude in the Basement Studios, your hosts, the good old boys, will see you all next time. <laughs> <laughs>